Hello and welcome to IndiaPostLive.com, India's first live and interactive news conversation web TV. I'm Prachi Jatanya. The past 10 years of the UPA government clearly saw a slow decision-making process with regard to the Defence Ministry. Tenders worth over $7 billion were either cancelled, delayed or stalled. And despite all this, the Modi-led government is still keeping its suspense over who will take over as a full-time defence minister after Arun Jaitley. We'll find out some more details. Take a look. The new government has a lot of expectation riding on it, especially in the defence ministry. But Prime Minister Modi has surprised everyone by handing Arun Jaitley additional charge of this ministry. The new regime has talked about making structural changes to the ministry. Officials hope for reform in defence production sector and reduce India's reliance on imports that form almost 70% of our military purchases. The cap on foreign direct investment is also likely to go up from 26% to 49%. But who is this person for whom the Prime Minister waits to take over this crucial ministry? Is it going to be Murli Manohar Joshi? Or will former General V.K. Singh be moved in? Or will it be someone else whom we least expect it to be? Well, a lot of names cropping up uh, amidst a lot of uh, corridors of power. We'll get some more perspective from our panelists in the studio. We have uh, senior journalist Ashok Vankhede who will also talk to us. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Vankhede, for joining us at the conversation on India Post Live. We also have Rear Admiral retired uh, Mr. Raja Menon, sir, who is the chairman of the task force, which is part of the National Security Council. He's also a strategic analyst. Uh, on uh, Google Hangout, we have Mr. Sagat uh, Shonik. He is a research officer at the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, joining us uh, from Mumbai. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shomik, for joining us uh, via Google Hangout. Uh, uh, I'll come to you, Mr. Wankhede. Possible names and what is really taking so much time to uh, give us a clarity on who will head the Defence Ministry? See, we'll have to uh, go a little bit slightly back. For the last 25 to 30 years, we have a coalition government and the, there are so many compulsions of the coalition partners, the regional balance. So, number of time, the Prime Minister has no other choice, but the person is forced on him to be a particular minister. After a gap of near about 30 years, we have a government mm -hmm. where the Prime Minister can pick his men. Right. In that case, Narendra Modi, when he formed a cabinet, he picked the people. Mm -hmm. So he didn't care for caste, creed, religion, state, representation. He picked according to the, his choice and what exactly he wanted them to do, right. his own team. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is defense, external affairs, finance, they are the key ministries. Right. You need to have a, a mature senior person mm -hmm. who will perform. Keeping all oldies at a bay, so he had limited options. Now, lot many people are trying. Murli Manohar Joshi is trying. He is trying for so many things. Speaker, if not speaker, defense minister, if it is not there, then at least planning, planning commission, deputy chairmanship. So that is working out. Another name is Arun Shori. Mm -hmm. He is being pushed by Sun. The yes. Sun claims that they have nothing to do with BJP and its government, but they are pushing hard on that. One name, Most which can likely. be a, likely, which can be a dark horse, mm -hmm. is Suresh Prabhu. Mm -hmm. from he comes Maharashtra. from Maharashtra. Right. So the equation with Shiv Sena, we have to just see, watch the equations for next few days to come. Mm -hmm. If they go sore, then Suresh Prabhu may change his party to BJP and likely to be made the defence minister. Right. But as of now, instead of keeping that portfolio to himself, the Prime Minister has given additional charge to the Finance Minister. That one thing, what has he, why it is done, is a big question. Mm -hmm. He should have kept with himself. Yes. But he has delegated the extra I mean, that power that to, extra the, to, to Arun, the, Arun Jaitley. Whereas the finance minister has the biggest task at present in his hand mm. to control With the, the inflation. So that will be the first delivery he will be making. So he might, people. of course, be you know ah, less so focused. So that is that is that is. I mean, I mean, we all are just working on various solutions and various things, or reasons, reasoning it out why he must have be he must have done that. But uh, we couldn't come to the proper conclusion. Right. Uh, also, we heard yesterday that the new council of, or the expanded cabinet will be announced in the next few yeah, weeks. Yeah, that's that's what. Even when he took the charge uh, as a finance minister, Jaitley made a statement that defence is not my portfolio, mm -hmm. it is additional charge given to me and 
soon it will be uh, handed over to a suitable person. Right. But now that suitable person Who is... Will it be? Uh, now, another thing which I want to specifically make, uh, my friend in the social science, he will be able to give more comment on that. What I personally feel, if you have got an able external affairs minister, mm -hmm. the burden on defence reduces. Right. The performance of an external affairs ministry is inversely proportionate to the load on the defence ministry. Right. We'll just ask uh, Raja Menon sir if he agrees with you and, and what are your expectations or why do you think that there is no clarity yet on who the defence minister will be? See, uh, no, under normal circumstances, uh, having one minister uh, uh, take charge of the defence ministry for a short period uh, is not unheard of, uh, in the sense that uh, we had this example of uh, Jaswant Singh, who uh, during the absence of uh, George Fernandez in the Thelka scam, mm -hmm. uh, took over the defense ministry for six months. And he was outstanding right. during that period. But that's mostly because he appointed uh, Arun Singh as his deputy, deputy. Right. and uh, allowed him to uh, have a free hand. Uh, free hand. And, and that period resulted in one of the best uh, reforms of the defense, make, defense apparatus that we have seen in the last 50 years. But uh, this time, the performance of the previous defense minister has been so poor that there has been, that there is so much pending mm -hmm. that this cannot be looked after by a uh, minister holding charge of another portfolio. He definitely needs a full-time minister because um, uh, on the one hand, the Defence Ministry is a very professional ministry in the sense that paperwork that comes to the Defence Ministry is invariably done very well mm -hmm. by the armed forces. Right. And um, uh, normally the contribution of the bureaucracy is only to ask some irrelevant questions. <laughs> and sign on the <laughs> dotted line. Uh, and uh, so the paperwork will come in a, in a, in a, in a, in a systematic. neat and systematic way. But uh, Do you mean to say the bureaucracy makes things more difficult for yes, the yes, professionals? Yes, 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 that's well known. I mean, it's well known that the bureaucracy creates hurdles for the armed forces. Right. <laughs> I'll get in uh, Sagat at this point. Uh, Sagat actually joined us uh, from Delhi. In fact, uh, Sagat, thank you so much for participating at the conversation mm -hmm. on India Post Live. Your first views on uh, who could possibly be the defence minister and, and why this kind of delay or suspense over the mystery of uh, the next defence minister? See, I think right now uh, it's very unclear. However, uh, it's a pool of talented people we have, and many of them are first-time experiences. So even if we say that, say General Vikas Singh would be a possible candidate, the question now is that how experienced and you know how would they position him for such a larger role, even though he's handled such things. So we find that the timing is very important, and uh, you know how. Uh, his advisory team could come in place or someone who's got more experience. So the question really dis is a decision of the PM who they put in as the defense minister. And I think uh, there's so many talented people with such a large pool of experience. The choice is really in the hands of the PMO and I'm sure that whoever is selected would be very capable of handling that position. Sagat, you actually come from an army background to just give us some perspective yes. of your background and uh, what do you think of the current si uh, situation because uh, there is no sense of urgency uh, it seems uh, in the Modi government uh, in terms of decision making of who could be the next defence minister because there is so much pending uh, like uh, Raja Menon sir has pointed out you know there needs to be uh, urgent or expediting the procurement process uh, and modernisation of the armed forces as well so what is your personal view in that sense? So, regarding my army background, uh, my father is a retired army officer and uh, his father too served with the army and their grandfather, great grandfather, everyone. Uh, regarding the slow and steady aspect of choosing a defense minister, I think that's a very uh, positive step because uh, if you decide very slowly and with a lot of advice from capable ministers and people in the government, I think it goes in a long term perspective on how they plan to modernize the army the challenges national and international. And as Dr. Um, Mr. Vankere pointed out, that the external affairs and the uh, Ministry of Defense go hand in glove. So I think in that perspective, it will be a lot of difference. I mean, it's so important that these go hand in hand. So whoever comes must work with them in uh, 
No, but I, I have a point to make. The uh, what we generally uh, claim and what is being this government being doing for the last one week, uh, I don't think that they are not serious on the defence uh, issue like that. Because the first day uh, the finance minister took over, he has made things very clear that the FDI will be open 100% to the defence production. Right. So that is what one thing was looking for last 10 years. Another thing was the yesterday's uh, cabinet uh, meeting. meeting. It was it has been made clear that the uh, all the purchases which are being kept on a hold, on a hold. will be expedited immediately just to boost the morale of the army. Right. So these are things. Another thing, the Sark summit, mm -hmm. what we had a small Sark summit on mm -hmm. the day of the vote taking ceremony, that shows that the uh, prime minister in this particular this government is too keen to develop the asian region of its own so that we less depend on the european or the american lobby so if we have got a good relation with china what the chinese premier been talking to the prime minister the, or the pakistan uh, president visiting india and all those things i think there will be a lesser burden on the or a lesser tension on the borders and I mean, I think you will be the right person to make a comment on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the finance and defense are you know, closely interrelated. Yeah. In some countries, they are actually joined together. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, what we have done is uh, create a post in the defense ministry for an MEA diplomat. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that has not been filled because the MEA is short stuffed. Uh -huh. But that person is very important in the sense that he gives a uh, a diplomatic uh, background to the choices that have been made. Mm -hmm. uh, in the previous case, uh, uh, the, the defense minister, he took some decisions which were contrary to the India's uh, stand, stand. Uh, like trilateral exercises mm -hmm. and all that, which is a bad thing where the defense and the uh, finance are working at cross purposes. But as far as the, uh, the presence of Mr. Jaitley is concerned, it can actually be an advantage to the defense ministry in the sense that uh, once the file has been cleared by the defense ministry, mm -hmm. the only person who can say no is finance. Right. Now here if you have the same minister as defense and finance, then uh, acquisitions uh, finance should be should become easier. 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 But there is one problem. <laughs> the problem is that uh, there is no chief of defense staff. Mm -hmm. So the three armed forces often have competing claims mm -hmm. and those competing claims can only be decided by a mature minister. Mm -hmm. In the absence of a uh, uh, minister being able to give time, for instance, you know, there was this case of uh, um, a strike core in the mountains. Yes. Now the answer really should be what the Americans do is they ask the armed forces, don't give me one option, give me options. Several of them. Sev give me several options. And some of the options may be uh, from different armed forces, some of them may be diplomatic, some of them may be economic, but give me options. So these options are not coming. And the minister has got to insist that the armed forces and the Ministry of Defence gives him options. So for that, you need a full-time minister. Right. And, and especially like we're talking about the requirements uh, from the armed forces. We've seen that, you know, there are delay in procurement of artillery guns. There's a deficiency of uh, good army uh, officers or personnel in the army. For the Navy, it's a depleted underwater fleet, which the chiefs have constantly in the last five years at least been, you know, persistent with their uh, demands. And none of them have been met uh, by the uh, by the former yes. uh, defense minister, Admiral Yeah. Sir. No, I mean, these kind of problems uh, will not be held up by the fact that you have a minister holding two portfolios. Mm -hmm. As I said, in these cases, it will be an advantage having Mr. Jaitley holding both portfolios. Right. I mean, he can't uh, approve a proposal from the Ministry of Defence and turn it down as Ministry of Finance. So that will be an advantage. But there are other issues where you need the presence of a full-time minister particularly in the absence of a chief of defence staff. Right. And when we talk of procurement, lot many companies have been blacklisted. Mm -hmm. Now, we will have to rework on that. Yes. They are blacklisted because really they are at, they have done some Obvious. fraud mm -hmm. or are lobbyists working against each other. Exactly. So, competing. Uh, competing. So, most of the companies have been blacklisted because of the media trial. Mm -hmm. So, this government is not going to take media trial anyway. That what the way uh, the Prime Minister is being 
uh, the entire government is being behaving. And as far as the problem which we think of giving time, mm -hmm. so 18 hours is a minimum time which the Prime Minister has told to put in. Uh, he himself is putting more than 18 hours. So, uh, this morning I was talking to at one program in a channel, I told them, I have seen number of people, those who are a minister in NDA's previous yes. cabinet, yes. Adar Bihar's cabinet. Now they are again minister in this cabinet. Right. But the body language has changed. Okay. Their attitudes have changed. Mm. Because the uh, the leadership under which they were working, Adal Ji was an accommodative man. Mm. He is not an accommodative man. He had the, he, for him, politics is till he gets the mandate. Once he got the mandate, now he has become a chaukidar as he claimed to be, right. where he has 125 crore CEOs. Mm. So morning he tweets, I got up, I am on a job. So every minister who is sleeping, his son says, get up, <laughs> your CEO is on a job. Right. So uh, people will have to work. Right. The right. only problem is that whether they will be deliver, they will be able to deliver. deliver. Now what connection, uh, tweeting and saying that I am on a job is mm. okay. But the job needs results. results. So that's what 120 Karur CEOs will be looking at. Right. Uh, Sagat, uh, your uh, views in terms of uh, uh, the top three in the 100 day agenda that Modi government has set for itself, what would be the top three uh, urgent defense related issues that you think uh, should be immediately addressed or brought to the discussion table? I believe that this government has an iron fist in a velvet love. So, in that perspective, well, the first thing would be in uh, negotiating with our neighbors, having a strong defense policy in terms of uh, you know, peaceful building processes. So that would be the first thing that how you negotiate your peace skill. Second would be to have a procedure for defense procurement in which uh, you look at having modern weapon systems, a proper supply uh, at time bound basis. And also I think the third would be the upgradation of staff, their training, the number of people recruited per year and the uh, staff shortage, especially for officers is about, about 10,000 less than the stipulated amount. So I think uh, staffing, training and defense procurement would be the first three priorities along with peace building and uh, you know kind of having a re-look at the NLC, a re-look at all the you know intrusions and infiltrations which again were pointed out earlier. So I think these are the primary points which they will be looking at and that, that should be the thing. Uh Raja Manan, sir, what do you think about the 100% FDI in defence production? It was, uh, for the last couple of years, it was being resisted uh, by the Defence Ministry. Do you feel then that that's something that uh, the, you know, the political masters and the, uh, you know, the bureaucracy versus the joint uh, or the defence chiefs will have to really renegotiate? Definitely, this will have to be renegotiated. Because today, when we say that we cannot build something in the country, what we are really saying is that the defense PSUs cannot build it. Yeah, different. Uh, we are not saying that India cannot build it. No, if you open the field uh, and allow the, the major players in India, for instance, uh, Tata's and Ambani's and all that. LNT. LNT. There are that, excellent companies which can yeah, really deliver the goods. They can, if, if they were given the lead, mm -hmm. they will would like to uh, put a stake into aviation, mm -hmm. uh, shipbuilding, shipbuilding. Uh, space, um, uh, hardware of uh, the army, army, which is in large numbers, but they will not do it if they get only 26 uh, uh, with a minor Nine. shareholding. Mm -hmm. They will not uh, participate in that. So, in that sense, the the defense ministry has has got to stop being ministry for defense PSUs. They have got to be minister for defense production mm -hmm. in the country, and for that, they're opening up definitely a welcome step. Awesome. Defense PUCs have become sick personally. Yes. They have to be something has to be done about them. Either get rid of these. Defense ministry's job is not to produce. Not let us not work like Pakistani army having dairies and even the farmhouses, mm. farms and uh, shops and shopping malls for the army. Let the army defend the uh, borders. borders. Let army do that job. But give army whatever they want. The first priority will be the procurement. Second will be FDI opening and the private participation in production. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you there are. Many companies in Europe, 
where the vending is done from India. Yes. We do develop yeah. their uh, small and mm -hmm. very uh, complicated, complicated parts, parts in India, Definitely. and then we supply them. Right. We earn a lot of um, amount, a um, lot of uh, foreign exchange uh, with that. But when it comes to supplying to our army, we have got such a policies and so restrictive policies that nobody would love to work on that front. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, upgrade remap ourselves, upgrade. Uh, remap ourselves. We have to really see the problems. Uh, what I find for the last 10 years, there is no participation in true sense of the armed forces in policy decisions. Yes. Most Absolutely. of the policy decisions are taken by the, at bureaucracy. the uh, bureaucracy, which really that. And when we, our friend he said that we have Mr. Uh, Singh, he can be the defense minister. The problem with Singh is he has recently retired and there were a lot of controversies with him. Most definitely. So, uh, like what Jaswan Singh is okay. Jaswan Singh, new army, but there was a lot of gap between his retirement and taking over as a defense minister. Before that, he became a seasoned politician, mm -hmm. handling uh, best of the portfolios. Now, Mr. Singh is still in a format of being a general. I don't think that he has become an ex-general as it. He still behaves in that format. What, so, what we need to give him some time. Menon, well, unfortunately, he uh, comes with a certain amount of baggage. 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 So, uh, he, it will be a controversial uh, appointment. Uh, and appointment. particularly in a very sensitive issue of personal appointments, appointments. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes with baggage. baggage. So, that will uh, muddy the waters. Okay. That will not be a good idea. Right. Sagat, uh, the morale of the armed forces, especially the army, has been at an all time low. There are fratricidal killings uh, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir time and again, or in other, uh, you know, uh, uh, forward area postings as well. Don't you feel then the biggest challenge or um, among its top priorities for the defense minister, next uh, a full time minister, would be to try and address the, uh, I, uh, try and address the morale there? I think uh, as regards to morale, that is the task of the commanding officer yeah. of the specific battalions and the regiments over there. So I think at the larger scale, the task of the defense ministry would not be to look into these factors on ground. That is the task of the commanding officer and his uh, team of all officers around him. And as the uh, level of escalation goes up, his uh, brigade commander and this one and so forth, the formations, how it works. But whereas the defense ministry can look at is things like one rank, one pension, things like, um, you know, the kind of equipment we are using, is it up to date, is it uh, meeting the requirements of the defense, what the uh, government, I mean, what the officials in the ministry are asking for, what the army, navy, air force, etc. They ask, are they getting that on time, are the rations of superior quality, is the equipment and clothing of, I mean, the nature is comparable to other uh, requirements. So, I think facilitating the survival, and uh, superiority of the armed forces is the task of the defense ministry. Whereas, you know, all the suicides or killing of officers and other things, that is the task of the armed forces and the commanding officers specifically. Right. So, that's how I put it. Right. Is there any sense of disillusionment uh, according to what you've known and, you know, uh, within your family, you must have seen over the years with how the defense leadership has shaped up or, or the lack of involvement of, uh, you know, the, def or the armed forces in, in the eventual decision making? Oh, I think there has been little bit, but uh, in terms of uh, decision making, for example, I can say that, in, say in the US, when the uh, Officers of middle level management and senior level management. They go on for further defense procurement courses. In fact, they have MBAs in that. And then they have corporate stamps also, where they work with companies like North Grumman, etc., where they are designing, developing all the things based on field experiences in Afghanistan, Iraq, other countries. So they bring back that experience and they upgrade the systems, etc. And they also inform the public policy and the defense management. So, in that perspective, I think we can learn a lot from them and bring that to our defense ministry as well. So I think that is something which we can bring. And regarding dissolution, I think that is very personal. I mean, it varies, that opinion would vary from person to person. Right? But I ask but, this question, you know, Sagat, and uh, to our panelists, because most recently Barack Obama, the President of the United States, personally made a surprise visit to the troops in Afghanistan. Even though there is a slow withdrawal, a phase-by-phase -phase withdrawal, his presence for the troops there was a huge morale booster. When have we last seen the Prime Minister of our country taking this kind of a leadership role? It, it's all about morale building, you know. It is eventually sends out a larger message to your troops troops in these kind of difficult postings. So, uh, I just would want your reactions. Yeah, definitely, that is what, that is the, still I remember when De uh, Sharad Pawar was a defense minister. 
a famous photograph. He was uh, crossing the, he was visiting one of the ships uh, by a ropeway, yes. and uh, that uh, mm. power of being Sharad was the quote with the quotation, I mean, the caption given to the photograph. Now that leadership has to come. That's what I said. You have to pick a right man. You can't have an old man with 80 years age because he's senior leader. You make him a defense minister. He can't visit Northeast because because of his health, health ground. Issues. So we need to have a strong, healthy. The body language of the minister should be such that every defense minister should, every defense personnel should feel proud that he's our minister. Secondly, what I feel, uh, they, this entire armed forces business means the people. Sh should feel like joining. Exactly. Uh, that, that it should be lucrative. Right. The uh, uh, salary structure has to be looked after. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, um, the man who is uh, a colonel, if he has a friend who is in a corporate sector, is earning much more and is enjoying much more benefits. So most of the time there is a illusion and most of the people, I come from Sani School Satara, most mm -hmm. of my friends they have left the army now yes. and they are joining corporate sector, some is LNT, some is with Reliance, some is. Why? I asked him why. He said, nee, ho gaya. It's enough is enough. No, why enough is enough? That thing has to be looked after. I think that's similarly, the point. That, that similarly, point the, feedback, answer, feedback, right. the feeding, uh, there were 16 Sani schools in India, mm -hmm. the central government Sani mm -hmm. schools. They were the feeding centers for right. NDA. So now, the Sani schools which is being given, financed by the state governments state and government. the central government, mm -hmm. the structure is 30 years back. Right. Now, look at the inflation to what level it has gone. Mm -hmm. the fee so, structure. ordinary man, a primary teacher's son or a farmer's teacher's son cannot think of joining a Sani school right. because he has to pay from his pocket. Mm -hmm. Previously, the government used to pay for him. Mm -hmm. So, these are small things really one has to look into uh, detail and uh, let us hope we will, if we have got a good defense minister, we can Very solve all these problems. Very interesting point here and Sagat, I would really expect your reply because you've seen this over the years in your family and around you. Uh, what is your personal view about uh, trying to get a better pay structure for the armed forces? See, that, definitely, that is one of the major concerns. For example, even my father, he retired, taking premature retirement as a colonel. And this was basically in mind when uh, my sister and my education had to be taken care of, and especially when we were going for higher education. So I think at that at that situation, my dad had to take the call and to, uh, take PMR and work in the public sector straight. So I think definitely uh, stability is I think a major concern along with uh, the uh, pay structure. So right. That so I think if you know pay structure is in. Uh, same structure as the corporate sector of say at the same government level as uh, say the civil service then probably there would be a difference and also like if you see in the civil service structure officer in the 13th year of service is at a joint secretary or a secretary rank mm -hmm. whereas in the army it's still at an FM colonel or say commander uh, wing commander at that rank so the, the scale is not matching compared to service right and even as far as civil service or military service so Either you bring equality at that level or you bring it at par with the corporate. So, no, bringing it at par at corporate is a difficult, difficult task, but at least within the services, there should be, you know, at one stage, one uh, common platform of assessing and promoting, and as well as, you know, the pay scales should be equal at, across the board rather than, you know, to specific of, you know, as per the rank structure because the army follows a hierarchical structure. So, in that sense, I think when officers look at stability, children's further education, higher education, my colleagues who want to do MBAs and higher studies, it becomes very difficult, especially if you have say, two or three siblings. Then it becomes really, really a point whether the officer continues in the army or takes on a corporate job ahead. Right, right. So, Interesting. That is the main challenge. I Interesting think. point there. Uh, before we wrap up the show, uh, uh, Raja Menon sir, your final views. Do you, is are there any concerns uh, from the armed forces about uh, the hundred or no cap or hundred percent FGI for uh, you know manufacturing of defense equipment? Do you feel that the Modi government or the agenda seems to be of privatizing uh, production, but that may go a bit out of control? Any concerns or, or reservations? Yes, I, I have attended some of these meetings where the private sector is also represented and government uh, representatives are also present and I find that the uh, 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 private sector representatives behave in a very timid way and uh, I, this, this is very disturbing in the sense that they feel that uh, you know their prospects of their companies can be damaged severely by these government representatives and therefore they must uh, uh, behave in a subservient manner with subservient body language 
Uh, this is very disturbing and this is very upsetting. But do you think that will change with, with Modi's uh, development agenda of, of privatizing it, a lot of sectors? I think it will change. Because he, For the better? Yeah, yeah I think he's an, he's an economic animal. Uh, he, he understands uh, what will deliver the goods. And I don't think he's particularly worried about protecting defense PSUs and all that. Eventually, uh, for instance, the, the largest number of uh, indigenous construction mm -hmm. takes place in the Navy. Right. But the uh, Navy is getting its ships mm -hmm. at an abnormally high cost because of the inefficiency of the defense PSUs. Mm -hmm. What the Navy is doing is subsidizing the defense PSUs. Right. So this is a bad… Uh, and neither are we gaining by buying old warships from, ab from abroad. No. no. Right. Uh, one final comment. The final comment is uh, Modi comes from Gujarat and he is a true Gujarati. Whether he sells chai or whatever he does, he has a business in his DNA. Mm -hmm. So in Gujarati, dhando pahle. Right. So he will open the gates for the business. And whether no it is FDI, whether it is PSUs, he will make PSUs to work. He will make PSUs to either show the profit or get get out from get out from here. Right. He is only one way, my way or highway. That is what Modi is. So let us hope for uh, better things. And I think even FDI comes 100%. We will have checks. It is not that we are opening the entire defense sector to the this thing. Right. We will have check and balances, the selected mm -hmm. areas. They will go by trial by trial. And no so, chances that Modi will keep the defense portfolio to himself? No. no we, he, will, he will wait. Because see, one more thing. Something goes wrong on the border. Mm -hmm. He don't want anybody to point at him. Right. So he will have some shock observer between him and the <laughs> defense. So we will have a defense minister. But as he, the sir has said, uh, finance and defense, they go in hand. And I think before handing over this ministry to somebody else, mm -hmm. there will be huge pur purchases. Oh. Lot many problems will be solved then and there only. So next defense minister who will be coming here, he already has a road map mm -hmm. ready for him. He has to just come and deliver. Right. A road map clearly for the next defense minister. Uh, many names being uh, suggested by our panelists also. You can write in and give us your thoughts and uh, tell us who, who do you think is likely to be the defense minister or would you would want to see as a defense minister. And his task has been cut out. What would you expect from the next defense minister? I thank all our panelists here for their insight and perspectives. Uh, Sagat also joining us uh, via Google Hangout from Delhi. Thank you so much, Sagat, research officer at TI. SS and comes from an army background. We have Rear Admiral retired Raja Menon sir also giving us a very interesting uh, viewpoint and Mr. Ashok Wankerji. Thank you for participating at the conversation on India Post Live. Do uh, put your tweets at, uh, at the rate India Post Live and our website indiapostlive.com. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned.